Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Eloy. In this video, I want to try to teach you the player rules for Free League's Alien, the role-playing game. This video is part of a series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, check the playlist and start at number one. Today we're going to talk about stress and panic. Stress level usually starts at zero and increases during the course of the game. The character sheet comes with a stress track to keep track of your current levels of stress. Stress increases by one whenever one of the following happens. When you push a skill roll, you automatically increase your stress by one. When you fire a burst of full automatic fire, when you suffer one or more points of damage, and as we've discussed before, that's one instance of getting damaged. So it's not that three damage to your character increases your stress by three. No, it's just one instance of being hit. Uh, it just increases by one, no matter what the total damage is. Uh, when you go without sleep, food, or water, when you perform a coup de grace, when a scientist in your team fails to use the analysis talent. That's an interesting correlate to the movies. A member of your own crew attacks you. A person nearby is revealed to be an android. Or when you encounter certain creatures or locations which are dependent on the scenario or uh, what the GM decides. So, gaining that stress level you start at zero as soon as you start gaining uh levels you must add a number of stress dice equal to your current stress level to every skill roll that you make so once that that stress goes up to, to to one or more you will begin adding a stress dice pool to your skill rolls now, as we mentioned in the very first video, sixes on the stress dice uh, still count as successes, uh, but now on the stress dice you have to be on the lookout for the ones, which in the proprietary dice are the uh, yellow uh, face hugger symbol uh, faces. That's the one. Uh, if you roll ones on your stress dice, that triggers a panic roll. Again, it doesn't matter how many ones you roll. If you roll at least one uh, face hugger uh, or one result on the yellow dice, on the stress dice, that triggers a panic roll. So the panic roll, what is it and how do you do it? You make a panic roll when one of the following happens. When you roll one or more, uh, when you roll one one or more on your stress dice, as we just discussed, the face hugger, if you get the face hugger result, you cannot push the skill roll. Instead, you have to roll for panic. Uh, you also roll for panic when you witness a friendly character suffering from a certain panic effect. They are, there is a table of panic effects, which we will talk about soon, but once you uh, roll certain types of effect, I believe it's above 12, uh, you also have to roll panic yourself. Uh, you also roll panic when you are pinned down by a ranged attack, which is a stunt that you can buy when you perform uh, ranged attacks. Uh, pin someone down, that triggers a panic roll. When you suffer a critical injury, uh, you also suffer, you also uh, have to do a panic roll. And when you're attacked by a strange alien creature that you've never seen before, or any truly horrifying event occurs as determined by scenario or GM. So to do the roll, you roll a single D6 and you add your current stress level. So then you check a table. Um, in general terms, if you roll, you know, if your total result is between one through six, you keep uh, your nerves in check. And so, uh, nothing uh, additional happens. It's after you roll a seven or more that you begin to um, suffer uh, the more prominent effects. So there is something called a panic action. So when you roll a 10 or more result on the panic roll, 
you are forced to perform a specific action. And each result in the table um, will detail exactly what that action will be. For example, um, if you roll a 12 on the panic roll, that means you scream. You scream your lungs out for one round, losing your next slow action. Your stress level is decreased by one, but every friendly character who hears you scream must make an immediate panic roll. So that's one of those examples of multiple things happening. Um, it's important to note that you might roll multiple times on this table, and uh, whenever you roll uh, a new panic effect, the rule is more panic. So if you are suffering from a panic effect, which means you've rolled uh, seven or more on your panic uh, roll, and you are forced to make a second panic roll, the new panic replaces the effect of the previous one. Now, the trick is, if your new roll is lower than your previous effect, then it is automatically adjusted uh, one step more severe than the previous effect. This is a bit of a confusing line, in the actual text, and I have just quoted it for you, the way I interpret this is to mean that if you're rolling, uh, if you're suffering from a current panic effect, let's say you're suffering from a panic result of 12, the scream that we mentioned, right? And you are forced to roll again, and now you roll a 7. Uh, what you do is you disregard that 7 because it is lower than your initial 12, and instead, you take that 12 result that you were suffering from and add 1 to it. So it becomes a 13. Meaning, if you're already suffering from a panic effect and you roll a new panic effect as a result of a new roll that gets triggered, you never decrease your, your panic effect. You always keep increasing towards more panic. So instead of 12, your new uh, effect is 13, which is flee. You have to run. Um, it's a bit of a confusing sentence there. Now, uh, the text also notes a specific talent called overkill, which allows you to, ref to replace the effect of a panic roll of 11 plus by an overkill effect, uh, assuming that you have enemies in sight. When overkill is triggered, you must immediately attack your enemies, and you won't stop until you or all your enemies in sight are broken. Uh, all other PCs in short range of you must make an immediate panic roll. So uh, it, it, it preserves your action, but it also causes your fellows to uh, uh, have to make their own panic rolls. Uh, it's important to mention, I don't know if I may have skipped this, this part, uh, there's something called panic actions. When you roll a 10 or more on the panic roll, you are forced to perform a specific action. Meaning that if you were in the middle of a performing an action uh, when you are required to roll panic roll, so you rolled your skill, you rolled panic uh, stress dice along with it, you got a face hugger result, and you rolled that panic roll and it ten turns up 10 or more, the current action that you were trying to do is canceled, and so it fails. And it is immediately replaced by the forced panic action, even if you would have succeeded because you rolled sixes on the uh, original skill check. So, again, those panic roll results on the table that are 10 or more have a specific action that you must take. For example, the scream. If you roll a 12, then you, it doesn't matter what you were trying to do, whether you were trying to shoot somebody or open a door or interact with a computer. If you panic, you scream, and whatever it is that you were trying to do fails. It doesn't, you don't accomplish the action. That's very important. And this is why overkill might help you, because instead of dropping the action, at least you get to shoot somebody. And so, Next up is stopping panic. Some effects of the panic roll table are immediate or last one round. Others remain in effect until one of the following happens. Another PC makes a command roll as a slow action in combat to snap you out of it. 
reflecting again the fiction when uh, Hicks uh, counts down Ripley when Ripley uh, takes the uh, armored vehicle, takes the wheel and gets them out of the <clears throat> uh, reactor. Uh, Hicks uh, uses a command action to calm her down. Um, so again, uh, some of the effects are just immediate, others last one round, others last longer until another PC makes the command roll uh, to snap you out of it, or you are broken, or one full turn passes, remembering that turns are measured in minutes, five to ten minutes, or, you know, somewhere around six minutes. Now, to relieve stress, which is to reduce your current stress level by one, you have to spend a turn, again, five to ten minutes, resting in a safe area that is secured from enemies. You cannot make any skill rolls while you're resting. If your rest is interrupted, it doesn't count. And so, uh, that's how you decrease stress by one per turn of rest. Some panic roll results can decrease stress. Like the, the scream, as we mentioned, it'll... it'll decrease your stress automatically by one. Um, also, certain drugs can uh, relieve stress. Um, there is a specific uh, way to reduce additional stress, which is called use of signature item. This may be performed once per act if you are playing a cinematic game, or once per session if you're playing a campaign game. Uh, using the signature item is a slow action to interact with your signature item in some way to reduce your stress level by one. So, if you're resting and you're also taking the opportunity to interact with your signature ac uh, item, then you could reduce uh, to stress that way. Uh, note that some conditions, such as starving or freezing, can block your ability to relieve stress. And finally, there is something called permanent mental trauma, which is when you uh, get a result of 13 or more on your panic roll during a session, this forces an empathy roll at the end of the session. So you roll your empathy uh, attributes dice pool only, not using any skill uh, and not using any stress dice. It's a plain empathy roll. And if you succeed, you develop a permanent mental trauma you roll on a table, which is a simple D6 table, and it'll give you uh, some specific uh, mental conditions that ensue. As the name implies, they're permanent mental trauma, so there's no, uh, there's no rules, at least in the player section, to deal with the uh, long-term effects of these. And this includes things like nightmares, uh, drug use, amnesia, and others. Uh, and so that's it for stress and panic and uh, next up we'll talk about conditions take care and hope to see you soon